Hi, I'm Antonio Mora. Much has been written, including by me, about why bias in the reporting of news deserves a great deal of blame for the severe polarization in American society. Much less attention has been paid to editorials and op-ed pieces. By definition, they involve the giving of an opinion, so their whole point is to express bias, to give disproportionate weight in favor of or against an idea. The problem is that the brave new world of the internet has brought access to an onslaught of commentary from around the world. When it comes to U.S. politics, we can read the published thinking of pundits at newspapers in Chicago and Charlotte, Denver and Dallas, Miami and Memphis, even Singapore and Sydney with just a few clicks on our keyboards. Columnists at the traditional mainstays of American journalism in New York and Washington are ever smaller voices struggling to be heard above the cacophony of an ever-growing crowd. In theory, that should be a good thing. Unfortunately, the democratization and globalization of opinion has also brought an increase in rancor and bitterness in the editorial writing that's a sharp departure from the recent past, something that was especially evident in columns about impeachment and the State of the Union. On newsandnews.com, we are constantly updating our opinion section to bring you a balanced mix of commentary from across the political spectrum and across the world on the biggest issues of the day. A quick look at the pieces we've posted in recent weeks sadly proves my point about the intensity of the acrimony. Here's the headline for an opinion piece from the liberal online magazine Slate. The State of the Union was a visibly degenerate variety show. On the other hand, from the conservative Washington Examiner, Pelosi's pathologically idiotic paper partisanship. See what I mean? two well-known news sources, one with an editor using degenerate to refer to President Trump's address, another using pathological and idiotic to describe Speaker Pelosi's behavior. And then there's impeachment. The bitterness, spite, and even hatred jumps off the page in columns about that. For example, from American Greatness, failure of the Democrats' bloodless assassination attempt. From USA Today, Trump impeachment inspired the Senate I loved to commit institutional suicide. Or the Washington Post, GOP doesn't deserve to survive this debacle. And National Review, removal would be insane. See what I mean about the hyperbole? Suicide, assassination, insanity, shouldn't survive. You get the gist. Calling people liars, something hard news journalists don't shy away from these days, even about disputed issues, adds to the animosity. Here's the Washington Post again. Let Hunter Biden testify so we can get out of Trump's world of lies. But here's real clear politics. Lies, damn lies, and shifts moving lips. It's a big enough problem on its own to have our thought leaders letting loose with unbridled hostility. But if you're stuck in an echo chamber where you're only hearing opinions from one side or the other, your thoughts are being swayed by unanimous acrimony. All of newsandnews.com is dedicated to avoiding those echo chambers, but especially our opinion section, where we provide you with a roadmap through that morass of spitefulness. Even when it comes to less angry columns, it's essential to read both sides because they consistently describe alternate universes. If you only read a piece from The Federalist titled Trump's Acquittal is Real and It's Spectacular, you would have learned of a very different world than what Vox describes in a column titled Trump will be acquitted, American politics will be convicted. I suspect many of you haven't even heard of American greatness, Vox, or The Federalist, and they're just three of the myriad of serious opinion sources available online. Contrast that to what the world of commentary was like as recently as the late 1980s. Then, access to opinion journalism was limited to people who subscribed to newspapers and to a few magazines. But even if you were among those who did, many of the op-eds you'd find in local newspapers came from relatively few syndicated columnists based mostly in Manhattan and inside the Beltway. Now, we have access to a dizzying array of opinion from any newspaper or online source you want. 
countless blogs, 280 character opinion tweets, and the often poisonous punditry on cable news and political talk radio. Those pundits and editorialists need to take some responsibility for the rancor and polarization. To conclude, in no way is any of this meant to absolve our politicians of blame for fueling the fires of division. But columnists should show some restraint. In looking back over the long list of titles of opinion pieces we posted on the impeachment process, one from The Hill stood out as my clear favorite. I suspect it will be the verdict of history for today's politicians and pundits. All parties should be ashamed.